This is a, an unbelievable challenge that we're confronting in our society and across the globe, Alzheimer's disease. It has health components, it's social components, uh, has major economic impact, and it's a challenge that we have not at all been able to get our arms around to figure out how it is that we can best position ourselves, on the one hand, to prevent Alzheimer's disease, to prevent the challenges associated with living long-term with cognitive impairment. And on the other hand, to recognize that we have millions of people in the U.S. and millions more throughout the globe who are waking up every day confronting this problem, who have family caregivers who have not been supported in their efforts to provide the kind of care and support that's needed to enable people that they love uh, afflicted with this disease to have the, the highest quality of life possible. And so this conference is really an unbelievable opportunity. It's bringing together brain trust from across the globe and from scholars and leaders who are looking at multiple dimensions of the Alzheimer's disease problem. People who are looking at how do we prevent it? How do we get to innovative care delivery systems? How do we create efficiencies, take uh, full advantage of finite resources? And so they're taking a look at each of these dimensions of a puzzle and hoping at the end of this that we don't have just another paper, but we have a plan for action. Action that would say we have to tackle the next three priorities in research and we have to do it by bringing together teams of scientists, teams of researchers representing different views on the issue um, in order to accelerate improvements in care and outcomes. We're going to find those out today, but I will tell you from my perspective, this conference will, will be a success to the extent that we place as great an emphasis as we can on the care issues that people confront. Uh, we've had investments in our society and again across the globe in uh, discovery of new treatments in the area of cure. But we have to confront the reality that people, we don't have a cure around the corner. We have people with the disease today. We have people who are positioned um, to develop this disease in short order as our population ages. And it's that population that we have to place uh, equal attention to in the investment in research, in the policies that underpin that research. So I think, uh, I don't know if it's one or three, but I would say my one, two, and three priorities are to say, please let all societies understand how critically important it is for us to make the investment in getting to a better care system uh, for a population living with, coping with the disease. Please, not, let's not waste the opportunity as we search for something better, a cure, let's not waste the opportunity to make sure that the family caregivers and loved ones of those in communities throughout the globe get the support they need, get the resources they need um, in order to be able to live meaningful lives themselves as well as to help support those afflicted. Well, what's interesting, we think about people as having diseases, such as Alzheimer's disease, but it is absolutely rare that a person has just one of anything. That uh, our work over the last several years has focused on this population living longer uh, who are accumulating problems, accumulating numbers of chronic conditions. So Alzheimer's disease for this population becomes one more uh, that contributes and substantially complicates their lives. So I don't I want to underestimate that at all. But to have, these are individuals then that will have heart failure and diabetes and depression and and in addition have all of that miserably complicated by cognitive impairment. So our work has been to say how can we better help that population for whom transitions in health are very common. Uh, they often get an acute episode of one or more of those problems and come into an emergency room or a hospital or a post-acute skilled nursing facility for care. 
The challenge is who's watching over them throughout the entire experience? How is it that we can begin to position this population so they don't have to enter the emergency room or hospital? Or if they do, how can we help them transition back to their community, to their primary care providers, so that everybody knows what happened and what's the new plan of care and how can we implement it to prevent future um, interruptions in this chronic illness trajectory? The goal of transitional care is to interrupt the real downward trajectory that is the characteristic of people living with Alzheimer's and multiple other chronic conditions. To take one episode um, and have master's prepared nurses working in collaboration with all the physicians and all the other health team members and most especially with the patient and family at the center of their care and say, what are the reasons that you aren't doing well, that you have these frequent in and out of emergency rooms and hospitals? What are the two or three issues that if we don't address, that is likely to continue? Uh, and so that's what transitional care does. It enables a focus on those priority issues to interrupt this downward trajectory for the long haul. And our work has shown consistently with very complex people, you can have very long-term impacts. That's where you get to high value healthcare in our society. I mean, this is not just about doing something that gets people to have a better quality of life, better function. It also reduces costs. To the extent that you can get people to stay on a steady state, um, and not have things constantly going negatively, going wrong, then you get a chance to use resources very differently. So for us, it becomes a model to think about in caring for Alzheimer's disease effectively. We just finished a study out for review, so I won't highlight for you all of the findings, but focused on cognitively impaired, hospitalized older adults, and tested the transitional care model against other evidence-based approaches, and demonstrated once again that this is an important path to help high-risk, chronically ill people in this country and across the globe get to better outcomes, get to better health while reducing costs. I think the biggest opportunity that we have right now is a call to action around clinical care of people with Alzheimer's and their family caregivers. The recognition that we do not have in place the kind of care systems that this population and their families deserve. The recognition that we have knowledge about how to do it better, but that that is not getting to people in their homes, living in their communities. And we have to figure out a way immediately to both continue to build new care systems that, that improve quality, that get to more effective and efficient care, timely care, care that is very responsive to people's needs and preferences and values, and at the same time, helps our society reduce costs. This is, I think, the number one priority. How do we get there? We are gonna to have to use every lever we can. We're gonna to have to mobilize the public uh, who often don't want to acknowledge this problem, don't want to acknowledge it. They, they might be experiencing it, but don't want to acknowledge that it's possible for them. We have to get them to understand that this is the challenge of this century. It's the challenge for their children and their uh, grandchildren, and it's going to eat up human and economic resources if unaddressed. And uh, so we do have to mobilize them, but I also think we have to mobilize our legislatures, uh, uh, our funders, um, uh, WHO, people throughout the globe to partner in a, in a plan of action that says, let's advance the clinical care and let's improve the health outcomes of this population uh, while making the lives of their family caregivers much better. So nursing is central. Nursing is central to solving the complex healthcare needs of populations such as those uh, living with, waking up every day with Alzheimer's disease. Nursing has been a central part of our own team's efforts uh, because of their capacity, the discipline's capacity, to think about all of the care needs of people, not just that they have this disease, but they have this disease in the context of money, many other health problems. They have this in, as a person uh, who is now going through unbelievable changes. 
that this problem impacts not just the individual, but everyone who loves them, all the people in their community. Nurses have that holistic view of people and living in families that make them ideal as a central uh, part of solving the complex issues related to Alzheimer's disease. We have seen this in study after study where we know uh, where nurses are a part of the team or lead the team, uh, that we are able to get to better care and outcomes. And so I envision nurses having um, and continuing to play the central role moving forward. Wonderful. Thank you, Mary.